Saturday night is one of the biggest games for Jackson Dart's legacy. Why, why, are you, why are you laughing? You are locked on Ole Miss. Your daily podcast on the Ole Miss Rebels. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Thanks for making the Locked On Ole Miss podcast your first listen every day. We're free and available wherever you get your podcast and on YouTube. We're part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And also, the Rebels play the Vanderbilt Commodores Saturday at 6.30 Central Time. It's a chance to listen to David Kellum and the Rebels' hometown crew as the Ole Miss looks to continue their run. Catch every play of the Rebels' home team broadcast with SiriusXM on Channel 190 or on the SXM app searching Ole Miss Rebels. The Locked On Ole Miss podcast is there as well. Hello, I'm Stephen Willis, and this is the Locked On Ole Miss podcast. Thank you very much for tuning in this Tuesday morning. And I do want to let everybody know they need to go to prizepicks.com slash college and use code LOCKEDONCOLLEGE for a first deposit match of up to 100 bucks. Daily sports made easy, prize picks. All right. Jackson Dart has an unbelievably important game for his legacy against the Vanderbilt Commodores. And I get that everybody's snickering because I just said that. But I don't mean it in the way you think I do. This is a game that I'm going to talk about, and I I, I want to put together keys for this football game. And every time I started looking at keys, I started thinking about Texas A&M, and I started thinking about Georgia and what Ole Miss needs to do to win those games and just completely moving Vanderbilt to the side. That's a problem. That is a game that you're really just going to have to get through and hope that you out-talent what's going on. We will talk today about how this is a legacy game Jackson Dart needs to have a monster day versus Vanderbilt. There's historic precedent for that, by the way. The energy has to come from somewhere, but who will it be? Is it going to be the crowd? Is it going to be a player that we're not thinking of that makes a play that wakes things up early in the ball game to where the Rebs can kind of get going and avoid the trap of looking to that for that Texas A&M and Georgia game that is coming up heck next week. We're all thinking about that and what's going on. This is a major game for Jackson Dart. And the reason I say that is you need him to take charge of this team. And if he is what we think he is and what I think he is, you saw my video yesterday and heard what I said yesterday. If my opinion of Jackson Dart is that, this Vanderbilt game is an opportunity for him to exert leadership and to make sure his offense is good to go against the Vanderbilt Commodores. Last year against the Vanderbilt Commodores, he threw for 448 yards on 25 of 32 passes, two touchdowns and a pick. If I'm not mistaken, one of the pick was kind of a hero ball type situation. But it's the game where Jonathan Mingo set the school record for receiving yards. There's going to be plenty of passing yards available. And the reason I bring this up, okay, that stat mask the fact that Vanderbilt did an unbelievable job of stopping Ole Miss's run game in Nashville last Saturday. Other than two 24-yard runs, Ole Miss had somewhere around 27 carries for 90 yards, about three yards per carry. And Vanderbilt and Clark Lee let everybody in the SEC after that game know how to handle Ole Miss's run game. Now, there are certain teams that just couldn't do it. They had the Texas A&M and the Arkansas that was running that 3-2-6 thing, and they Ole Miss just kind of ate them up in the running game. But for other teams like Texas Tech, Mississippi State, heck, even Alabama, Vanderbilt provided the blueprint for how to deal with the Ole Miss running game with Quinshawn Judkins, with Zach Evans. That happened. Now, Ole Miss blew the game out. Ole Miss scored 52 points in the game. Most of those were in the second half. They were down – either 20 to 17 or 17 to 14 at halftime to Vanderbilt. In the third quarter, they exploded to like 35 points because Ole Miss just decided, well, we need to quit forcing the run and start throwing the football. They were quick. They were not quick to change, which is a problem that we have seen from this staff historically over the last few years. Now, this staff is winning 75% of their games the last three years, but we're nitpicking a little bit. So that game 
Jackson Dart was required to be relied on. When Jackson Dart was not the finished product that we have seen right now, it was a much more rough version of Jackson Dart. And he threw for 448 yards in that game. Long touchdown passes to Jordan Watkins. I expect Trey Harris to have a big day. Now, does Ole Miss come out immediately with that game plan? Because you have to think that Vanderbilt is going to key on Quinshawn and Ulysses Bentley and play real similarly to the way the Auburn Tigers did because they used that same blueprint that Clark Lee pointed out last year. We're a year into it. And when Ole Miss doesn't get a first down, when Ole Miss gets conservative with their play calls at all, and when Ole Miss, man, I don't want to say gets lazy, but gets to the point where it's run, run, pass, run, run, pass, and we all are familiar whenever that goes in. Um, Ole Miss gets predictable, and this is engage eight type stuff can work really well. Vanderbilt had a better defensive line last year. They had a better football team last year than they do this year. Last year they had Ray Davis at running back. They don't have that guy. A.J. Swan has not played the last few weeks. The rumor is he might be on the field in this one. They still have Will Shepard, and they still have Jared McGowan. So offensively in the past game, there has to be a situation where you figure they're going to be able to get free. So I've told you all of this, and you can see exactly how this will be on Jackson Dart's shoulder. This is a game that I'm not overly impressed with the line. I think it's too many points. I think this is an absolute definition of a trap game because I'm thinking about Texas A&M and Georgia right now while talking about Vandy. This is a difficult situation for the fan base. Imagine, I imagine it would be that way for the players and it would be that way for the coaches as well. Remember the last... Two times Lane Kiffin has played in Nashville. He scored like 52 and 66 points, and he struggled a little bit in Oxford. I think Ole Miss won a game like 38-17 or somewhere in there. That was the Mike Wright game. So Ole Miss needs to figure out a way to take care of business. I don't care if you win this game by one point. Seriously, Jackson Dart needs to do what he needs to do to elevate that offense to where they can score. If they can score – Vanderbilt's not going to be able to win the ball game. And it is going to be imperative to be Jackson Dart, not necessarily up for the game. I'm not saying I want Jackson Dart to be up for this game. I want Jackson Dart to be efficient in this game. I want Jackson Dart to use his weapons, Trey Harris, Caden Priestcorn, Zachary Franklin, who looks like he's waking up a little bit after the Auburn game. There's still some timing stuff that needs to be worked on, but as the season goes on, that's going to get better. Jordan Watkins, each and every game, if he played against Auburn, he is going to play against Vanderbilt, and he is going to play against a and I think he's going to be more effective. The stitches will be out by then, and you will see a different Jordan Watkins than we, have saw, we saw against Auburn, who caught punts in that game, and Jordan Watkins deserves all of the NIL money for laying it on the line for Ole Miss football. I can't imagine there's been too many people over the last – 125 years that have laid it on the line like that for Ole Miss football. That's a small number. This isn't a situation like Patrick Willis putting a club on his hand and playing linebacker. You can still tackle with your shoulder in that situation and just kind of wrap up. This is a situation to where the main purpose of your job enjoys a, a, a broken hand is involved in it, and he's catching punts like eight days after the game, after the surgery against Auburn. He's going to play against Vandy. He is going to play against Texas A&M. He is going to play against Georgia. In fact, by Georgia, he's probably going to be fine. Jackson Dart needs to play efficiency. And his legacy is it needs to be a legacy. If he wants to be the greatest of all time at Ole Miss, and I think he does, every time we ask a question to that kid, he comes through, period whether it's a perfect pass, a perfect moment, every big-time moment the kid rises to the occasion. If he wants to be the greatest of all time and have his number two up in the rafters someday, he takes care of business against Vanderbilt. We're all going to forget about this game. We are all going to forget about this game. But for Jackson Dart to take that massive step to where he could potentially be, I told you yesterday, 
If he comes back for his senior year in school, he will leave Ole Miss the all-time leading passer, the all-time leader in total offense, and the all-time leader in quarterback's running yards. The big three stats, he will have them all. And if we are talking about Ole Miss going to Georgia with a chance to have that Super Bowl-type game, listen, everybody always talks about we are Ole Miss, and I hate we are Ole Miss. I hate it with every fiber of my being. I hate that term. But the reality of it is you don't go to these games and you win. You eventually get over the hump. It's not a we are Ole Miss situation. It's a getting ready to do it. If you keep knocking on the door, eventually it's going to open. So if you're playing in these games against Alabama and Georgia every year, you're going to become a different program. You're going to have a different expectation. and Eventually, you're going to start winning these games. You're going to be able to recruit better. This is nothing but good for the program. That being said, this is, again, a Jackson Dart legacy game. Because for Ole Miss to have those games against A&M and Georgia, Ole Miss needs to handle business and be efficient against Vanderbilt. Period. It's a really simple thing. But if Jackson Dart plays mistake free and clean, Ole Miss wins this football game. If some for some reason we're still talking about this football game next week, something horrible happened. And we have to adjust our expectations from the New Year's Six and the Citrus Bowl to all of a sudden we're starting to talk about the Duke's Mayo Bowl. That is what this Vanderbilt game means. Remember, Vandy will come up with some stuff because they did last year. They figured out what nobody else did. They will come up with a scheme. Um, that is going to be difficult for Ole Miss football as well. Now, I do want to let you know that today's show is brought to you by LinkedIn Jobs. Today's de- to These days, every new potential hire can feel like a high-stakes wager for your small business. You want to be 100% certain that you have access to the best candidate- candidates available. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the right team for your team faster and for free. Listen. We all know how to create a profile. We've done it for 20 years at this point, whether it be Facebook or Twitter or X or whatever it's called. We all know how to make a profile. Just make a profile on LinkedIn. And this is where it gets different. This is where it gets fun. Add your purple hashtag hiring frame to your LinkedIn profile. And you can spread the word that you're actually, in fact, hiring. It's got simple tools like screening questions that make it easy to focus on the candidates with just the right skills and experience so you can quickly prioritize who you'd like to interview and hire. Listen, hiring a team member for your team, for your company, is no different than hiring a good football coach. If you hire the right coach, they have just a positive and measurable impact on your business, on your school. If you hire the right guy, you're going to be in the playoffs at head coach in football. If you hire the wrong guy, you're going to be doing it again in three years. The difference is in your company, if you hire the wrong one, you're going to be doing it again in three weeks. So it's why small businesses rate LinkedIn Jobs the number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. It helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash college. That's linkedin.com slash college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. College football season is here, and this season Locked On is kicking up our coverage with Locked On College Football Kickoff. Live each Friday, Locked On will go live at 11 a.m. Eastern on every college YouTube channel, including this one. College Football Kickoff Live will cover playoff implications, the conference rivalry games, and go in-depth like only Locked On can, including insight and analysis from our stable of Locked On College hosts covering their team every day. Find Locked On College Football Kickoff Live every Friday at 11 a.m. Eastern on any Locked On College YouTube channel. You will not want to miss it. It's fantastic. I think it's better than Big Noon Kickoff and College Game Day and all of that because we just focus on the matchups. The Locked On College Football Kickoff Live is really, really good. So in the first segment, we talked about how this is, believe it or not, a Jackson Dart legacy game. Now, The next two segments, we're going to talk about essentially the energy and the traps because those are major keys that Ole Miss is going to have to deal with in this football game. You have a situation with Lane Kiffin doing the stuff where he's trying to get people out to the game. If you look at that, 
Um, Ole Miss Hoops HQ put out there. Great W, Lang, back to the vault next week. Lane Kiffin says, pack it, please. No excuses. And, and that is absolutely true. And if you look at Ole Miss's attendance this year, they're averaging 64,000 per the cent- SIP Central per game. And they said, let's keep it that way. It, it's a big situation because energy is not going to be coming into this game just on its own. You, you're going to have to bring your own energy in this game. The crowd, somebody needs to do something that gives a jolt to the team. That always happens. The 2010 to 2003 team that David Cutcliffe took 7-1 and one and was a loss to LSU away from the SEC title game needed a 52-yard field goal to beat Vanderbilt. That happened. Jonathan Nichols making a 52-yard field goal. That was required. We all remember Greg Zolman going out there and absolutely showing out. Jordan Watkins, Jordan Watkins, Jordan Rogers having fantastic games against Hugh Freeze and those good Hugh Freeze teams. And by the way, Auburn, I mean, I hate to pile it on everything, but you might want to look at the Hugh Freeze record historically, um, the way the Vanderbilt game has gone. Just, just a heads up there. But it's a situation where energy has to come from somewhere, whether the crowd or maybe a special teams play. Maybe the defense kind of just goes workmanlike and it's robotic. Um, maybe it's something like that. Maybe Zachary Franklin has that breakthrough game. He had a touchdown as the all-time active touchdown leader in college football against Auburn. Actually looked fine. I think there's some timing issues to work on, but that's going to get better as the season goes on. Maybe somebody like that provides energy. I do not expect it to come from Ulysses Bentley. I do not expect it to come from um, Quinshawn Judkins. I do think Vanderbilt is going to absolutely key on those players. You're going to see Vandy do the engage eight stuff. Maybe some outside run you'll see in this game. Maybe Ulysses Bentley does, on second thought, have a chance to break out. But we'll see. Somebody has to provide the energy to get the team up. Or Ole Miss is not covering this line because the line right now is at 24 and a half points. That is four scores. Four scores. Ole Miss is needed to cover the line. So to put that in perspective, Ole Miss would cut not cover with 41 to 17. 41 to 17 is not a cover. That's a Vanderbilt cover. So you have to ask yourself, how many points can Vandy score in this game? And then from there, do the math of where Ole Miss can end up. Because this is going to be a sleepy atmosphere. It's like I said, this is a bring-your-own-energy type of game. The crowd needs to wake up. They need to be charged a little bit. It's homecoming, I think. Um, Historically, games like this is difficult because everybody is going to be looking forward to what games are immediately around the corner. And this game cannot be overlooked. Just absolutely cannot be overlooked by Ole Miss football. Because Vandy is not, like I said, this is not a good team. They're probably not even as good as the Auburn team was that Ole Miss just faced. They're probably not as good as the Arkansas team that Ole Miss faced two weeks ago. But what this Arkansas team is, believe it or not, and this is going to sound absolutely silly, and I I get that, and you can put it in the comments and tell me how stupid I am. Vanderbilt's used to playing as an extreme underdog. What they feel good about and what makes them get up for a game is hope. And traditionally, Vanderbilt has had hope against Ole Miss. The last few years, that hope has not been there. But traditionally, against Ole Miss, this is one of the games they get really up for. Do I think that's going to matter? Ole Miss has to play the whole game the way they did the first half against Auburn. If they do that, it could be a dogfight. But this line is pretty close to right. This is a game that if Ole Miss just plays clean, that is all they have to do. Just play clean. Ole Miss wins this game going away. Now, this isn't a slight at Vandy. It's kind of a statement of fact of what's actually going on. Ole Miss needs to get through a game that they are a 24 and a half point favorite against to get to Texas A&M and Georgia, the two games that are going to define their season. At this point, we still have talking is like, is 11 and 1 really possible? I mean, that thought is going through our head at the moment. 10 and 2 is probably the minimum expectation. That is what we're talking about at the moment. 
And honestly, this team deserves it. We're not overlooking anybody. We're celebrating this actual football team that is really good. But a mess up at Vanderbilt and upsets happen. Remember, USC under Pete Carroll lost to Stanford as a like a 40-point favorite. Lost the game. It can happen if you're not up for it, period. And when we come back, we're going to talk about why Ole Miss needs to avoid that trap and what trap they're actually facing. And if we have the energy and if we play clean, we're going to avoid that trap. But what does that trap actually look like? But at first, I do want to tell you that today's show is brought to you by Price Picks. Price Picks is kind of the most fun I've had winning like 25 times my money this football season. You select two or more players, pick more or less on their projected stats, and place your entry. Testing my skills on prize picks this football season is the most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. If you have the skills, you can turn $10 into $250 with just a few taps. Click, click. It's there. Saturday was a weird game, and all the quarterbacks probably got less of what, than what they predicted. What will be different against Vanderbilt? I think wide receivers, if you look at what Jonathan Mingo was able to do against that secondary a year ago, I think Trey Harris is due for a more type game. I think Caden Prescorn is going to step up in a way that last year he could not do. I think that this offense is really close to completely unlocking and being what we saw against LSU, but they just need to do it. If you have confidence in that, just go to Prize Picks and pick out those games as well. Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on college. Use code locked on college for a first deposit match up to 100 bucks. Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on college and use code locked on college, all one word, for a first deposit match up to 100 bucks. Daily fantasy sports made easy. Price picks. The Rebels play the Vanderbilt Commodores Saturday at 6.30 Eastern time. It's a chance to listen to David Kellum and the Rebels hometown crew as the Ole Miss Rebels look to continue their run towards, I don't know, history maybe? Catch every play of the Rebels hometown broadcast on Sirius XM on channel 190 or use the SXM app searching Ole Miss Rebels. And the Lockdown Ole Miss podcast is on there as well. I do want to let everybody know we got some stuff going on once we hit 5,000 subscribers on YouTube. So if you have not subscribed and you are watching this program, please subscribe to the channel. If you have, please tell someone else to subscribe to the channel. We want to grow this as quickly as possible. When we hit 5,000 subscribers, you will have a live live stream. I guess that's redundant. Um, during the week, every week, where we just talk about almost football. It's kind of a video version of our Discord live. So you will have a situation like that. Once we hit 6,000, live remotes happen. The quicker we get to 6,000, if we can get there before a prospective bowl game, there could be remotes from the property. There could be remotes from the Under Armour All-American game. Those could happen if we get to 6,000 by the 1st of January. And 7,000, we're looking at doing a live call-in show. So we're going to build this up just at a fantastic rate. Right now, I have a situation. I don't want to do so much work to where I have to do over 20 hours of work a week. Um, but in this case, I enjoy talking about Ole Miss football so much on live stream. There's not much work into a live stream. There's not much work into a remote. So if we can incorporate that into what we're doing, um, obviously, you know, my lifestyle is not going to be affected. So we're going to do that. Call and show all of that stuff once we hit 5,000, 6,000, and 7,000 subscribers. Those are the three bullet points. So everybody should get fired up about that. Anyway, Ole Miss basically has to avoid the Texas A&M and Georgia trap. And I'm going to put this up again. This is the line. Ole Miss is favored by four scores. Over-unders at 63 and a half. Um, this is a game, that, honestly, that Vanderbilt, this is a role that Vanderbilt is comfortable with. Ole Miss is looking forward to Texas A&M Georgia. They need to out-talent this game. You need to provide your own energy somewhere, and you need to play clean. If Ole Miss can avoid what happened in the first half against Auburn, they are going to win this football game, period. Period. But if you look around the beat and everybody talking about, about Ole Miss sports, and this is not making fun of anybody, 
But whenever you have things like this, Ole Miss continues to strengthen his bowl projections with over win over Auburn. And right now, Brett McMurphy of the Action Network has Ole Miss playing Penn State in the Citrus Bowl, which would be a that'd be a heck of a football game if we're going to be completely honest about it. But that game is there. Ole Miss has New Year's Six dreams. You, Ole Miss has playoff dreams. Let's deal with that first before we start dealing with the Citrus Bowl. Even myself put on Twitter, I was, I'm trying to put together some keys for the Vandy game. My mind drifts to A&M and Georgia every single time. So that's likely the biggest key in this game. Be present. Really interesting stuff. I mean, what can you do? This is going to be one of those games, and everybody has it. And I've been on staff at Ole Miss. It is absolutely factual that you can only get kids up two or three times a year, period. You have to pick and choose when you do it. If you do it at the wrong time, you're going to be problematic. Ole Miss obviously did not do that against Auburn. Thank goodness. They did not play locked in. They played rattled. They played sloppy. They're probably not going to do that against Vanderbilt, at least I hope not. But the next two weeks, Texas A&M and Georgia, they need to be up. They've been up for Alabama because they were up for Alabama. LSU, they were up. They've got two opportunities they need to get up for later on in the season. So we'll see exactly how that goes as well. Avoid the trap. This this game is a trap. Not a trap in so much that, I don't know, Vandy can beat you or something like that. It's a trap in the fact that you could be sloppy and not play the way you need to play. And you end up finding a game where Ole Miss plays down to Vanderbilt. And we've all seen that game. Everybody has seen that game. So understand what is going on. Understand who Ole Miss is playing and understand what's at stake. If Ole Miss can play clean, play clean, they have a better football team than Vanderbilt Commodores. They just do. That's not a slight at Vandy. That's not a disrespect at Vandy. That is just the truth. And if Ole Miss avoids those traps, they'll win the football game. And they'll win it going away, honestly. Hey, before I get out of here today, I do want to let you know, Go check out the Rebel Report with Michael Borky. Um, It's available wherever you get your podcast. He's, you know, that's the podcast that is with the Super Talk channel. Um, Michael has come on the show a couple of times. He does fantastic work, and I think everybody should take them in. If you take the homer that I give you, okay, and I think everybody would agree that I am what I am, and I'm completely unabashed about it. But if you want somebody that is neutral and down the middle, but also plays a situation where he's not going after clicks necessary or subscribers, the Rebel Report and the um, newspaper reporters are a fantastic avenue for all my sports, period. It's best, the best. Michael does a fantastic job, and I hope everybody listens to his show. And that's an absolutely free plug. I absolutely did not have to do that. So thanks again for making the Locked On Ole Miss podcast your first. Listen every day. We're free and available wherever you get your podcast. Every dayers, subscribe to the show. The sooner we get this to 5,000, to 6,000, to 7,000, some really cool things are on the agenda as well. So I'm pretty excited about that. We've gained 70 subscribers since the Auburn game. Since I've announced this, we've gained 70 subscribers. If that roll keeps up, all of a sudden, we're going to be at 5,000, heck, this week, potentially. Um, and then we'll start working on 6,000. Because 6,000 is the remotes. And me doing a remote from the Orange Bowl or the Citrus Bowl or all that would be actually pretty cool. So tune in for that as well. Um, I ordered my equipment for that already as well. But thank you very much for making us your morning show of choice. It's always a good time to do this. I really enjoy this. And living in Central Florida, I get to talk about Ole Miss football with people that want to hear about Ole Miss football, and that is quite enjoyable. Until tomorrow, I'll see you later. Take care. Hotty toddy.